everybody, this is Borna Kazarani from Melbourne, Australia. I hope you're doing fine. First of all, thank you so very much for all your lovely comments and great feedback. And please forgive me if I'm not able to reply you all. I'll try my best. Tonight, I'm going to have a conversation with Roger William Stuart Drake, who was born in 1969. He lives and works in Amsterdam. He specializes in painting portraits with oils. His focus lies in the handling of the brush using broad brush strokes and the exploration of the dramatic possibilities in the face through color using a limited palette of about 12 colors. Over the past 15 years, he's been teaching on many different levels, always uh, guarding his students on possibilities and ambitions. He works with foreign students mostly at the Royal Academy of Arts in Hague. Roger teaches drawing and painting at the prior education department and stage arts for the master's students. He also works with several group of expertise or experienced portraits in figure painter. Uh, painters at the private art academy, uh, workers in Amsterdam. His different approaches of teaching each with its own focus point like light and shadows, coloring, brush technique, or expression. His emphasis lies in the use of the colors to achieve three demonstrational effects. Realism is his starting point. Uh, thank you very much. And the uh, um, entire conversation actually is going to be in English. So if you're interested, find out more about Roger. You can actually uh, go to his uh, Instagram uh, um, profile and find out actually I'm going to have a conversation with you. Let's meet, ask Roger to uh, join me for a conversation. Hello! <laughs> How are you doing? Fine, fine, thanks. You too? Fine? Uh, I'm, well, yeah, I'm trying my best and I've been busy through these shows. Thank you very much, Roger. I was thinking today about that I had a really great uh, conversation last night with you and um, it, took, it snapped back in those days when I was living in Iran and that was um, amazing. What's happening with um, your internet? Okay. All right, let's see what's happening with your internet. Um, I don't know if you use a Wi-Fi, if you're using Wi-Fi. Or... All right, I need to send him another request. <clears throat> Trouble. Trouble What's here. happening with the internet? Are you using your Wi-Fi or 3D? Yes, it, uh... without Wi-Fi. As you, okay. As you, yeah. okay, great, it, great. Did you get... Problem. Sorry? I'm in the middle of nowhere, so maybe that's the problem. <laughs> that's okay. That's right. I was telling... I don't know if you've heard that, but I was telling you about you that we had a great conversation last night and snapped yes. it back in those days when I was still living in Iran. So before I'm gonna thank you for that conversation and uh, before I'm gonna start my questions, would you like to say hi to those who are watching us now or maybe gonna watch us later? Well, uh, there we go. Hi, for everyone watching me, <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> right. I'm curious about that, I have no idea who is watching. Probably. That's all right, <laughs> oh, well, a lot of people. So, um, okay, now I'm, I'm gonna start. So, <laughs> uh, you mentioned in your biography that um, you, on a regular basis, um, run workshops uh, in the Netherlands for a group of like uh, consisting twelve students. Um, I'm interested to know what is your priority to you know choose students for your workshop. How you do you or for your workshops? How do you usually select those students? Well, I'm not. I don't really select them. They they select me. <laughs> they they want 
uh, uh, they want to follow my classes. And I don't know how I do it, but, uh, but somehow uh, the level is quite high. There's not, it's hardly ever that that's, it's just a beginner. Uh, so I, I keep standards high and I, yeah, it's not that I'm advertising, especially for that, but it happens. Uh, so I managed to get about, uh, I don't know, 100, 150 students a year. Uh, that's, that's, well, they are really ambitious. That's what I want. They really, I, I like to work with students that, that are a little bit, at least a little bit ambitious and, and want to learn something and have a certain standard from, uh, from where we can begin to really develop uh, uh, painting. Yeah, so. well, you, you see who is really, um, who is really um, like enthusiasm for their works and then you go through each profile and then you will see who is who. Could you please put your volume a little bit down? Yes, I will. So, so probably better. I'm All right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's much better. Yeah, that's. Uh, is is there any criteria that you have to meet before they're gonna get into the workshop? Uh, well, no, not really. Sometimes they feel insecure about it, and they they send me some pictures of uh, previous works, and then I uh, I select them uh, if I and, and when I think the level is not quite high enough. Sometimes. I mean, no one is listening, eh? Sometimes I say I'm full. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, class is full. Because I don't... Well, I'm not really interested in working with people who don't know absolutely nothing. I mean, uh, I do work a lot with people who, who, who are experienced in acrylics. My, uh, my thing is oil. And so it's very difficult to, 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 to switch from acrylics to oil. But, yeah. uh, but sometimes I manage to do that. Okay, but it's 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 now as I said, it, it's it's much. I, I prefer it when people uh, really have some skills and know how to paint a portrait because it's not painting a portrait that 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 that, that, that is uh, with a, has a great likeness to the to the sitter. That's not yeah. the problem. That that's not a trouble. I think I think the, the trouble is making an interesting picture, an interesting image. That's uh, that's where my aim lies, and if people uh, want that, they can call me. Of course. And it's very easy for you to see actually if that person is quite talented or not. You can easily distinguish. Yes, but it's not talented. Is I mean, Vincent van Gogh, I don't know if he was really talented, but he had such an eager and such a power and such a lust to paint and such an ambition that mm -hmm. his work grew with every painting he made. So it's not really about talent. I don't know if I'm that talented. I just work very hard. Right. Uh, yeah. Some people are talented, but it doesn't mean that they make good pictures. There's a right. lot of Russian realist painters now. Mm -hmm. I hope they're not listening. And they paint really uh, talented, very technical and talented, but it's, it's boring. I think the only thing that makes painting interesting is, 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 is kind of ambition and, and if are willing to 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 suffer a little bit to 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 yeah to they to... have to have it in themselves they, they have to have it in themselves then yeah. you will easily understand okay so i know you've been recently finished a large scale girl portrait um commissioned yeah. by the university of amsterdam yes. uh this painted are five outstanding uh female professors Tell me about it a bit, please. How did it happen? Well, to start with, it's big. I usually paint paintings uh, by 50 by 60 centimeters. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one is almost two by two meters. Yeah, the, the, the University of Amsterdam just, just called me and said we had a look, we, we took a look at uh, 20 uh, portrait painters in Holland. And we thought you were the best. So uh, they gave me the commission and I met the, the, the five uh, professors, very interesting ladies, very, uh, well, uh, very impressive ladies, I must say. Uh, so I did my best to, 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 to make a unity of, of five women who are very strong individuals. That was the challenge of the painting, to make uh, uh, a united painting, a painting that, that, that's, that's strong as a whole, as a group. But 
uh, with a lot of with, with with enough attention and uh, 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 how do you say? Well, at, at, at the, 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 <clears throat> they, they, my intention was they should all have their uh, sh their own shine. Let's say. Oh it was yeah, yeah. It was it was quite a new experience because you usually choose people to paint to their face, like to paint their faces, but yeah. this time probably was uh, someone asked you to like drawing the you know the uh, portraits yeah. of uh, different people that could be. I think that could be a little bit challenging. Yeah, you're right. Because, well, there were five uh, women and three of them, I wouldn't have picked myself. <laughs> I hope they're not listening. Uh, <laughs> I mean, w w when I ask someone, from, can I make your portrait? Uh, uh, then I do that because there's certain quality I see, certain drama or, or, or skin texture, or I don't know what it is. Uh, but, well, there were some of these ladies who were, although very interesting and very powerful and very impressive and very smart, not really suitable for painting, I think. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I wouldn't have chosen them if I uh, <laughs> had a chance. Well, we're not, we're not going to lie here. I hope they're not listening. <laughs> I hope they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably too old for Instagram. Because <laughs> we are so young. Uh, it's all my fault. That's not his fault. <laughs> yeah. You said it. <laughs> so from uh, year 1996 to 2013, you were working as a set designer, graphic designer of the theater productions, yeah. um, opera uh, adaptations of Frank uh, Grothoff. Am I right? Frank Grothoff, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. A singer and actor, what happened? Why did you stop? Well, we did some about 15 or 16 productions together. And it was, well, it was very fun to do. There was, was, you know, there was a lot of money, there was a lot of attention. Uh, each performance played in, in, in big halls, big theaters, about 150 times a year. So it was, it was very successful and we, we, I loved doing it. But after mm -hmm. 15 times doing that, that same trick, well, it's not a trick, of course. But it's, every time it's a challenge. But uh, 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 the way he approached theater and my approach of theater, somehow... Uh, was so going to do, you, I, I, do you mean like you had a different perspective? Yeah, but, but, but I was young. He's, he's, I'm much younger than he is, and he's very experienced, and I was... What was I, 22, 23, or 25? I don't know, when I began working with him. So, so he learned me everything, and, and, and I learned it by myself. But after 15 years, 20 years, I began to develop my own uh, uh, visions on theater. And then oh. I met my brother <laughs> of this actor. He's also an actor, but in a, in a total different way, much more uh, seeking for depth and for introspectiveness, and, and yeah, let's say, heavier subjects. And so I went with him, and I'm still working with him, his brother. Are you still working with him? Okay. Yeah, I'm still uh, designing sets, but on a, on a smaller scale. It is, the productions are a bit smaller. I mean, in the days, there was, there was so much attention and so much, uh, uh, so much money to make productions. Now, the, the theater landscape in Holland is, is uh, very sad. It's very dry ground these days. That's sad, but I still manage to to make uh, one or two predictions uh, a year, and I like I love doing that. I mean, the, the 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 isolation of your own studio and painting whatever you want, and no one tells you what to do, uh, uh, is is one thing. But the other thing is to work in a team and make a theater production with with uh, with a director, with actors, with uh, other designers. I like this. I like this this uh, this combination of things. Because I'm I'm very social, but also very antisocial at the same time. <laughs> uh, there are lots of questions coming uh, through that if we get a chance, we will go through it. It's more than like 68 questions. And then if I get a chance, we're going, <laughs> going through those questions. Um, to answer them all, my hairdresser is in lockdown. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Next week, I look smashing. 
<laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so one of the things, one of the things um, drew my attention to your work is the limitation of using colors. And why is it? And tell me if you're doing it intentionally. <laughs> no. It just happened. No. Yes, I do it intentionally. Of, of course. course you do. <laughs> Good question, though. So I, I went to the, the, the uh, Rembrandt house. This is the, the, in Amsterdam. Uh, it's, it's the place What's where called? Rembrandt, Sorry, what was called? Uh, Rembrandt house. That's, that's the, the house of Rembrandt, Rembrandt van Rijn. You may have heard of him. He's a, he's a great painter from the 17th century. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is, well, he is one of my biggest heroes of all times. And he uses only, I don't know, 10, 12 colors. So I thought if he can do it, I can try. And uh, a few years ago, I started to give more and more lessons and courses and art courses and things like that. And I thought it would be easy to, to limit my palette, uh, uh, but it would be easier to, to explain it. I mean, painting is very difficult. And if you, if you, have, if you use 20 colors, it's, yeah, you, get it, you make it too difficult, I think. So by limiting the palette in such a way that you choose your colors very carefully uh, to have a maximum of uh, possibilities uh, mm -hmm. helped me a lot as well. So I, so actually I, 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 I'm using the, the limited palette that I teach my students, but I use it myself. Well, not that entirely. I use four different ochres and three different yellows and two more reds. But don't tell anyone that they're not listening. No, well, just the few hundred thousand people. Don't yeah. worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of, it's like your, or became your signature to just using 12 colors. Uh, I don't know. You have this, this, this famous art teacher of the, what is it, 19th century, 19th century, uh, Zorn. He has, he made beautiful paintings with only four colors. Uh, well, they're not that beautiful, actually, but he's a good painter. Uh, so I don't know if it's, 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 if it's that uh, exceptional to use only 12 colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm not very technical. I'm not really interested in how other painters do it. Uh, well, apart from some of my examples was Rembrandt and, and Lucien Freud, for example. Yeah. But I, okay. I use similar... Uh, uh, a palette of as Lucian Freud, but he, he has where I use two whites, he uses four whites. And where he mm -hmm. uses, I, yeah, I never use green, I mix it, and he has uh, two greens or so. Well, right, but to go right. into details, are we? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> people will look away. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> too technical. So as as often, so I asked, uh, because I've spoken with lots of different um, painters, and as as often, I definitely want you give us a tour. So take us wherever you like. There is an option. Uh, you can reverse the camera, and then you're gonna be the director. You're gonna direct to whatever you're gonna show us. And then also you can uh, talk like, you know, if, if there's like a current um, project or project that you're currently working on, you can take us with you. And um, if you reverse the camera, we will follow you. Look, there's my kitchen. <laughs> the highlight of it all. Well, this is my studio. My studio is in the middle of, can you hear me as well? My studio is in the middle of nowhere near uh, there's a windmill over there somewhere is a windmill there's the dog hello dog <laughs> <laughs> he's Tommy and uh, this is the studio wow it's very high it's a bit of a mess uh, right now I'm working on oh well actually I'm not working on this one this is a commission painting I did uh, some months ago, and I sold it already, but I had it back in my studio because I have this book made, uh, in the end of October there will be a re the release of a catalogue of mine, uh, consisting of about 50 paintings and uh, woodcuts, 
and this one will be in it. So I had to bring it home, so to speak, uh, uh, to, to, to have it uh, photographed. Uh, at the end of the week, there will be a photographer here. But I took the opportunity to make an adjustment because I, although I did, I, I did, I did sell it, I, I wasn't really happy with this, with this neck era. So I changed it a bit. The shadow. Yeah, the shadow, yeah. So, well, interesting. So what's wrong with that? Why do you, why, what's the things you don't like about that? Well, I, I just changes, changed it this morning, so I think it's, it's all right now. Unless you say he looks like a tortoise. <laughs> okay. Well, he does a little bit. Too. Looks amazing, anyways. Thanks. He's an amazing guy. Very gay. Very sweet. And this is my palette, palais. There's not really wow. a system in it. And this is the mess I work with. It's not 12 colors. <laughs> uh, not, no, there are not 12 colors here. Well, there's a lot of reds and there's a lot of similar ochres. Oh, my phone is very low on batteries, I see. Well, uh, no, this may be a little bit more. Okay, you've got me there. Let's switch the subject. <laughs> this is the Wall of Fame. They're all hanging here waiting to be uh, photographed this week. For is that book. you? This handsome man, yes, that's me. Well, the light is a bit... Oh, yeah. That's me. I always tend to make myself 10 years younger and my other models 10 years older. This is my friend and agent and assistant and whatever. She looks 10 years older on this painting. Very sorry. <laughs> She's 12, in fact. <laughs> this is my youngest daughter. Yeah, it's a bit... Well, the light is, is a bit awkward. There she is. Isn't she sweet? She's two months old now. Wow. And very sweet. So this is, uh, 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 yeah, let's say the wall of fame. This is probably going to be the cover of my painting, of my book, sorry. I think it will be the cover. Uh, and these days I'm <coughs> into uh, woodcuts as well. You see, I've made some woodcuts recently. This is the printing machine. If you can see what I mean, this is where I print the woodcuts. For example, this is this is the piece of wood oh. where I made this lovely lady. So now you know all my secrets. The woodcuts. Yeah, this is the messy era. Behind here, there are a lot of paintings from 20 years ago. Well, this one is nice to mention. This is a fantastic, uh, a portrait of a fantastic singer-songwriter, Scott Matthews. He's also on Instagram. Check him out, Scott Matthews. Definitely. He me, yeah, he's, 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 he's a gorgeous singer. He is he from Netherlands? Is he from Netherlands? He's from England. He's from England. He yeah. asked me to, to paint his portrait for his uh, wow, records. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a bit too white. I'm so, yeah. I saw him make this painting and it, it, it was the sleeve of his uh, former uh, record. Yeah, I love doing it. What can we say? This is me filming. <laughs> This is a self-portrait, which I don't resemble at all. Is that you? Yeah, I don't look like it, don't, don't you I? Look, actually, it looks like you. Does it? You're too yeah. kind. Don't lie to me. <laughs> it's a nice painting, I think, but it's, it's not really me. But, well, who cares? This is, this is a painting I'm very fond of. This is a recent painting made of Onur. He, uh, he's a Big man. I'll show you how big he is. 
Wow. But he's working he's on that now. Person. I'm sorry, he? Yes? Is that the same person? It's the same person, yeah. But this is his belly. This is just his beautiful fat face. I loved painting him. He's a very nice, very nice guy. I used to teach him. Wow. And he owns a snack bar uh, around here. <laughs> wow. How cynical is that? This is René Grothoff, one of my dear friends and actors who I work with now. He's the brother of this Frank Grothoff guy I told you about. Yeah. Yeah. He was shocked when he saw this. Do I look at serious? Why? <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe because he looks 10 years older and he looks very serious because he's, he's a very funny man. You should never ever paint my portrait. <laughs> no, no, I don't have that much commissions. And then when I do have commissions, people really like the way I do it. I'm kidding. Because, you know, <laughs> resemblance, it. look at all, if, if you go to a museum, all the, all the, I have to look at my viewers now. All the paintings you see in, 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 in museums, in the Louvre, in, in uh, Prado, I don't know all these medieval and renaissance paintings, you have no idea if they resemble the sitter or not. And it, it, who cares? <laughs> they're, they're good paintings and that's what it should be about. Resemblance exactly. is, is, is one thing. It's, it's not so interesting. Uh, no, want... because in, in my opinion, I have a zero information about, I'm just worried about your battery. Just make sure that you're connected oh. to the... Yes. Um, I don't want you to lose the power, please. Just make sure oh. that you're gonna connect your charger. Um, I have a zero information about painting. And since I started this show, I've started learning, you know, through, I started learning and like, you know, update my information or like, you know, understand about your world as a painter. Um, what I believe and what I understand is the paint you see, it shouldn't be like a photograph. No. It, there should be a difference, you know, and uh, because if you want to paint what exactly, um, if you want to like a paint a portrait, which exactly the same, uh, same as looking the same person, you know, in the photograph, there is no point. I don't know if I'm right or right. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. If you want, if you want a picture taken, uh, be my guest. But if you want a, a painting, it's a translation. It's a translation. It's, it's, it's a medium that, that, that takes time and takes effort. And when you see this, 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 this development in a painting, and you see exactly. the, how, how, how a painter is, is, is striving for uh, uh, a, a good painting, no, let, mm -hmm. let, let's put it. Let's put it different. Uh, I think a painting should be an, an autonomous piece of piece of art, yeah. and, uh, which only relates to the to the sitter. I mean, the sitter yeah. inspires me. Yeah, the person who I want to create inspires me to make a good portrait, mm -hmm. and uh, it can never be one on one. I mean, th th there's Cecina uh, Pas uh, Peep, you know, what Magritte said, he painted a pipe and he said, this isn't the pipe. No, it isn't, it's a painting, because you can't smoke a painting. So uh, if I'm portraying someone, it's not that person, it's, it's, it's an image I make of him. Uh, it sounds like an open door, but still it's very important, I think. It's an image I make uh, inspired, don't want to sound too pompous, but uh, inspired by the, 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 the sitter's personality and the sitter's looks and the sitter's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to, to catch in a painting. And in such yeah. a way that, that the handling of the paint is interesting to look at. Yeah. Like, like this, 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 I don't know, 16th, 17th centuries, centuries uh, uh, paintings. You don't know who they were. You don't know how Rembrandt's wife really looked. Not exactly. too good, that's for sure. But uh, he made some beautiful paintings of her. And I'm not even interested in how she really looked. I mean, this painting is so beautiful and that's, that's her. So I can imagine someone who, who commissions a painting of mine uh, is a bit shocked or maybe even disappointed. I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> no, mean, no, no, that, that's great. That's, that's, yeah, that's what I understand as an audience. 
when yeah. I look at any, like a painting or, you know, any piece of a paint, a painting or drawing, and yeah, absolutely. Is that possible to put your phone there instead because it's a little bit shaking? So. It's shaking. Uh, yes, but I'm charging it at the same time. And I don't want your hand to get tired because... Oh, oh, oh. What am I doing? That's all right. <laughs> Working on uh, it. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Okay. I'll use a banana to keep it in place. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Roger, now <coughs> I want to take you back two years ago, just when you started painting. How did it happen? And why did you choose painting as your lifetime career? Wow, that's, that's a question. <laughs> uh, well, you know, children like to draw and like to paint. And at a certain moment, they realize that they're not very good at it, or it, if the horse they want to draw is, is actually uh, much more difficult to do than they, than they, than they thought when they were eight, nine, ten. So usually children lose the, 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 the enjoyment of, of painting and creating when they have reached the, 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 the age of 12, 13 or so. But some people don't, and I didn't. I always kept on painting and, and drawing. My father was, was a, quite a stimulus to it. He was an artist himself. Well, kind mm -hmm. of art. And he stimulated me to, to, to continue to do it. And I just wanted to do it. And, and if, uh, even when I was 15 or 16, I thought, I'll be, uh, I'll be an artist. Why? I, m m m what I'm more interested to find out is about, like, the moment you've said, or you promised yourself that I'm going to become a successful painter who you are today. Yeah. I want to see what snaps you the connection that you made or you're making between who you are and what you create in regards regarding of pain yeah it's a good question actually i can i can say why i became a set designer <coughs> because i had this 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 moment of enlightenment uh, and maybe it maybe it it it's it, it, it goes for the uh, uh, artistic part as well. When I was 10, my, my, uh, my parents took me to an opera, the Zauberflöte by Mozart. And I was 10 years old and we were sitting fifth row or so, for very good places. But still I was small and I couldn't see because uh, uh, there was a big man before me. Yeah. So I went to the side of the, uh, of the hall and I went sitting on, and I, I sat on the, on the staircase just uh, at, at, at the front of the stage, but then the side of the stage. So I had to, uh, how do you say? No, I, I looked from the side on the stage and I saw uh -huh. this, this beautiful sets of, of, of uh, uh, rocks and water and, and fire. And it was very spectacular. But at the same time, I saw how it was done. It was just cardboard. It was wood. And I how saw- How old were you? How old were you? 10 years ten. old. Yeah. Okay. So, so at, at the same time, I, 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 I uh, fully believed in, in, in the, 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 this magical world, world that they staged on stage. But at the same time, I saw how they did it. So I, I saw the illusion and the, and, the, uh, and, 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 and the technical backgrounds. And I thought, it's, it's amazing that, that, that I'm so into this uh, and that I'm, I'm really... Uh, uh, catched. You were fascinated. Yeah. You were fascinated. I was you were like amazed. Yeah, mm. yeah. And at the same time, I, I, I saw this is all a lie. It's, it's not true. They just made it. They just made it from with, with some wood and some paint. So it, it's fake and real at the same time. And I think that that, that was a that was a moment. Uh, I realized uh, I wanted to do that myself. So I wanted to make things which are artificial and at the same time uh, are very true. A bit like Oscar Wilde said, an artist, the, the truth, what did he say? Artist, the, the lie that tells the truth or something. Like the, re the realism that you, you, something in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at the painting. Like a fusion art. Yeah, 
you look at the painting and you see paint and you see uh, uh, a human as well. Of course, it isn't human because it's a painting, but through this, this, this amount of paint, you, you experience uh, a personality. And that's, that's magic, I think. Yeah. Cool. And I think this moment when I was 10, this, this, this could have been the starting point of this all, this, this, this duality of, 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 of fake and reality, and then, well, the, the lie that tells you the truth. How beautiful. How beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Story. <laughs> All right, that's very interesting. I asked every single artist who has spoken over the past um, almost 15 days on my show. It's very interesting. You know, the artists, any artist's uh, past is more important to me. Um, I'm going to compare it to who they are, where they are famous now or whatever, but the moment they, you know, they um, make an agreement um, with themselves that, you know, I want to be somebody like this or that, that's, that's been always fascinating and it's very important for me. Um, mm -hmm. It's important to me to know, why do you choose portrait for painting? In my opinion, opinion, in my opinion, <laughs> you want to send your message uh, through each person's facial expression to your audience. Am I right? Yes. I can follow that. Uh, but you asked me why... Why, are portraits... why? yeah. Well, uh, that's what <laughs> I get from your painting. Paintings. Yeah. So, is that what you want to convey? Like, you choose specific people or faces because that's the way you're trying to make a connection through each one of those people's faces to your audience. That's the way you want to convey the message. Now, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's true. But to be more precise, I think in, in, in the, the, the specifics of, of one person, so in, in, the, uh, well, in the specific way one looks, I think, everyone can recognize it. I mean, if you paint just a, a flat face, a beautiful man or a boy or I don't know, uh, that's not so interesting, I think. If, if, if you paint something with, 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 with a nose that's a bit like this or with, okay. with, with a, I don't know, with, 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 with a grin that's not really uh, uh, symmetrical or something, if there's something that you think, hmm, is it okay? I think people can relate to it the viewer can relate much more to the to the to the imperfectness than to the to the perfectness and if i if i wanted to 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 paint an apple i mean i don't have an opinion on an apple i mean it's, it's delicious i have one every day but it's not well there's no psychology in it and if you paint a person uh apart from the fact that it's technically it's it's quite uh, challenging because if the one eye is not in place, everyone will notice. Absolutely, absolutely. But there's also the, the, this, the, this, this uh, uh, psychologic uh, aspect of it. Uh, it it's because uh, you, 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 you deal with people and it's a challenge, I think, to, to make a portrait in such a way that, that the viewer can relate to it. So you of have course. to, yeah, it, 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 it should be a meeting. A meeting? Yes. Well, a mediator. It's like a mediator. You, yeah. as an artist, you paint someone's, uh, someone else's um, uh, face, and you want to somehow, as far as I understood, I'm understanding what you're saying, like you want to convey your message. When I see that portrait, I said, well, that person is sad or it's happy, but also there is a message behind that. You know, there is a story behind that. And the story that you created with that face is what you want to convey, what, what you want your audience to understand. Yeah, 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 that's a way, nice way to put it. But, but the story is not really a story. Uh, no, like I mean. Story, but it's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an abstract the creation. Story. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Sorry. Well, that's what art is about, of course. Exactly. <laughs> and this is my last question. Um, another thing that attracts me to your work is the lines on people's faces the and the shadows in your paintings. 
the shadow and lines are done in a way that is very neutral and um, prominent. Is that what you're doing it? Tell me about that. It's very fascinating. Uh, well, I'd, I'd like to paint everything I see. Uh, I must admit, I, I use photography a lot when I paint because I make high quality uh, pictures, about hundreds or two hundreds of them each for each portrait, because I, I really need to know each wrinkle, each, each, each nostril or hair on the nostril. I need to know, I need to see and understand everything in order not to paint it. So it happens once in a while that, that I choose a very young model or someone with a very flat and beautiful skin, as I recently did with a beautiful Chinese girl, uh, she had a flawless skin. It was beautiful. There's no wrinkle in it. But I, I thought but you were I, talking uh, about me. I thought you were talking about me anyway. Yes, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they're about the same age, I think. <laughs> the I early twenties. Uh, <laughs> I wish. Uh, but but it's uh, because I, I, I like to paint everything I see, and I uh, uh, I don't want to give the nose too much attention. Uh, uh, despite of the the forehead, I mean, this is just as interesting in in color treatment, in light, in dark, as an eye. Yeah, as you would say, an eye is complex and complicated. Uh, this yeah. is just as interesting. So, if you work on this and, and look at it and keep looking at it, you see a whole landscape. It's not just mm -hmm. a, a plain forehead, but there's a lot. Of, there's a lot going on there, and I want to paint everything I see, and I need okay. more information that I paint. Wow, we okay. should write this down. Beautifully said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Um, thank you very much for your time. And is there anything that you want to say? Probably I didn't ask you. No, it, it, it's, I don't know why it is, but I've got a lot of followers from, from, from Iran. I don't know why. That's it, very interesting. Uh, whoever I've spoken from who's um, not Iranian and whoever... Who I've spoken with, they said like we've got lots of followers from Iran. Yeah, I think Instagram is very big in Iran. I think of <laughs> I course. don't know why this, but I have really, really thousands of followers from Iran, and some really lovely uh, art students who copy my work. There's an academy in uh, is it fun or some? I don't know. Is it fun? Is it fun? I, I don't it's know. Yes, that's what I mean. Wow. And then they copy my work. I'm so honored. <laughs> that's very that. interesting because <laughs> Iran is one of the biggest um, cultural and uh, very art arty city um, in Iran. Oh. And it's a very tourist city. Yeah, that's very interesting. That's very yeah, interesting. I, I was really honored and flattered by, by doing so. And they, they sent me once in a while, they sent me uh, a painting that they, that they copied. Well, I, I studied Van Gogh, and if <laughs> young art student in if I studies Rocky Willems, well, that's that's too much. I can bear. It's, <laughs> it's really lovely. But I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone in uh, Iran who follows me. Uh, sure, yeah, thank, sure, thank and you. I'm sure they're gonna watch it uh, after I post it. After I'm gonna post on my uh, Instagram. Thank you very much. Did you like the conversation? Yes, I liked it very much. Yeah, yeah. Good questions. Always good to 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 make me think about myself uh, uh, under some pressure. <laughs> so thanks, thanks for, for inviting me. You've got a lovely You're show going welcome. on. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate for your time. I will talk to you soon. And do you want to say yes. bye to those who are, gonna wa who are watching us? Yes. There he goes. Bye to those who are watching us. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, Warner. All right. You take care. Talk to you soon. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you very much for watching us. I had a great and wonderful conversation with um, Roger Williams, uh, Roger Williams at uh, Door Drake. If you want to find out more about Roger, you can go to his Instagram page and Instagram and find out actually had a conversation with. Um, there are lots of questions. Unfortunately, I have to wrap it up this interview or conversation. And uh, sorry if I didn't get a chance to go through um, what you've sent it. Um, here. I really appreciate that. So look after yourself, be well, uh, be patient with the situation, everything gonna be okay. Take care.
Bye.